Welcome, folks, to the 24th of May, 2023 Aries Working Group call. Uh, today, we're going to continue our discussion of the Open Wall Foundation. This is a hyperledger meeting, and so the antitrust policy and the code of conduct are in effect. Uh, links are available in the wiki page uh, that is available newly in the chat, which I repeatedly paste because of Zoom's annoying feature. Um, and so we, uh, yeah, so please be mindful of those and uh, and please reach out if you have any concerns, either to Stephen Kern and I or to Hyperledger Leadership, um, and we will uh, help solve that particular issue. Um, are there any folks that wish to make, uh, to introduce themselves today? Good morning, everyone. This is uh, this is Jorge Flores from Entidad. Um, I want to introduce myself. This is my first time attending this Aries Working Group call. Uh, however, uh, my company has been working on building Aries uh, trust ecosystems for the last couple of years. We're currently working on um, uh, a farm worker use case, and uh, I'd like to. Uh, present uh, at some point down, down the road, uh, present some details about what, what exactly we're doing with farm workers. But I did uh, listen into the recording of the last week's call and uh, thought it'd be important for me to participate in, the, in today's call. Thank you. Jorge, welcome. And yes, we'd love to hear about your case here in the, in the, in the call in the future. I think that would be wonderful. Anyone else that would like to introduce themselves? Daniela, your hand is up. I was going to ask you to if you didn't volunteer, so this works well. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know if I've recently attended one of these working calls. Uh, I do listen to them, as as everybody knows. I listen to many of our working group calls on my lovely walks down to the coast. Uh, so thank you for those who do not know me. I'm Daniela Barbosa, and I'm the executive director of the Hyperledger Foundation. So um, uh, looking forward to today's discussion. Being here to be as helpful as I can. Thank you, Daniela, for, for being here. Uh, anyone else? I see lots of familiar names and we're glad you, all of you are here too, <laughs> to be clear. Excellent. Okay, quick announcements. Uh, we have Dice Europe in uh, June 7th through 9th. Um, this is the, it's not IAW, but it's IAW adjacent. Um, and, uh, and happening in Europe. Um, and so I believe the format will be uh, quite similar. Um, and uh, uh, and that's going on. Uh, also, the did XYZ Hackathon, and Stephen mentioned this before, the, the, the utility of having a, an Aries de developer to monitor Discord and answer questions from those uh, involved. And then uh, I wanted to stick the, uh, a non-creds workshop here as well, which is coming up like really soon. Um, that would be next week on Wednesday. So actually during this call, I think. Um, and so that uh, that's a, a workshop. I believe this is one of the ones uh, hosted by the, by Hyperledger. Yes, so that, is that correct? That is correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, correct, so yeah. you can register for that uh, there and that is free to attend. Um, and uh, I heard Stephen, Describe. I don't see him on at the moment, but he had described that as uh, everything from uh, what it was from the very basics uh, all the way to updates and what's happened recently. Um, and so that would be, uh, if you're interested, that's a great call, a great workshop to attend and and, uh, and expand your knowledge. And Stephen's the right uh, person to to be involved there um, because of his contributions in that area. Uh, any other announcements we should have on the list, but don't. All right, and any uh, work updates that are urgent enough that they need to come up in this call. We're trying to sort of fast track the discussion to leave as much time as possible for the Open Law Foundation discussion. Okay. Our agenda topic is the Open Wall Foundation, um, and I have a couple things that I wanted to kind of cover to get the conversation started, and then I uh, believe we should continue. And, um, and every, everyone is welcome to speak um, and, and to share your opinions or ask questions. 
um, or or ask that we discuss a particular uh, topic that hasn't been and you feel like it should be, even if you don't have the answers, um, all of those things are welcome in our discussion. Um, is there anything besides the Open Wallet Foundation that we should have our, on our agenda today as a discussion point? Okay. Um, we do have the chat available if you would prefer to type instead of talk, um, but you're very welcome to also speak up. Um, if, uh, if it gets uh, busy, then we'll, uh, then we'll use the Zoom hands feature uh, that keeps track in the participants list of who raised their hand first, and that's an easy way to, to pass the mic to the next, uh, next person. Um, the, uh, um, so, uh, so yes, okay, so with that, let me dive into a quick overview to sort of uh, restart the discussion from where we were. And I'm gonna start from down, uh, these are the notes from the last meeting on the topic that we collaboratively uh, created. Um, and I, I expect today that we will could talk about some similar things. Um, and and I, I paste them here as a, as a method of sort of referring to and, and, and growing the, um, you know, the, the, the notes on the discussion itself. We do have the recording, of course, and it does get transcribed uh, with the recording to the cloud method. Um, and so we'll, we'll have that as well. Um, but the um, but that'll help us sort of organize our, our thoughts um, as on this topic. Um, I wanted to call out two things here. Uh, one is that Tracy Kurt had a uh, having not been at the meeting last time had a great thread on Discord here um, that uh, that I wanted to link to um, in the Aries channel, uh, where she uh, where she shared some things and answered some questions. And so that's that's highly relevant. Um, I didn't pull the whole text Tracy in here, but but wanted to link it for those that hadn't seen that conversation. Um, I had also taken these notes and stuck them into a, a, a discussion topic on the Aries group uh, or, or on the Aries uh, GitHub repo, uh, not the Aries RFCs, but the regular Aries one. There is, there is one of those, um, and we um, there wasn't any traffic on that, at least as, as to last night when I was putting my notes together, um, which is okay. Uh, I had shared that link also in the in the Aries Discord um, channel. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to do as wearing my uh, community leader hat is I wanted to uh, uh, highlight a few things that I felt were important and, and, and talk about them a little bit from my understanding of things. Um, I'm clear that this is the opinion of Sam um, as a volunteer leader in the community. And so I wanted to highlight these things as important. Um, and there's a, things that I don't think are issues, which is uh, one of the reasons I'm kind of bringing it up um, to, to round out the discussion. Um, it was it's important to me uh, that there's a continuity of, of community, no matter what happens. Um, so if we were to move uh, things like meetings, call uh, wikis, calls, calendars, etc, uh, need to have um, close facsimiles to what we have today. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but but the mechanisms need to be there so that we can just kind of keep working together as a community. Um, and uh, we need to still have meetings and still have things and, and have it be organized more or less the way that it is today. It's worked really well um, over the over the years that Ares has existed in Hyperledger Foundation. So any move would need to to make that happen. And all existing people and work continues with as, as little disruption as possible. I uh, given my conversations <clears throat> with the Open Wallet uh, folks that I, that we I've talked with on this topic. This uh, this should not be a, a, an issue as long as the organizational support is present. And, um, and that's something that we could definitely talk about it um, and, uh, and, and make it happen. So um, I don't anticipate this being an issue, but may be necessary to coordinate a few things before uh, you know, an official move happens, should that be uh, an issue. Um, so I, I, I think that that, is not, that doesn't represent a, a very large um, uh, issue there. Um, the, other, the, other, uh, the second thing that I wanted to bring up is a continuity of brand. Um, Aries has a brand. It's known. Um, I think that it perhaps isn't known for the things that we hoped it would be, um, but it is a brand that is recognizable. And, and at least in the in the near term, that needs to be a brand that is retained and lives in one place. Um, I think that it it would be uh, fairly disruptive to have a lot of confusion about whether Aries had moved or hadn't moved because parts of it had or parts of it hadn't. Um, and so I think that we need to be sensitive to the continuity of brand. It doesn't mean that that we have options that are necessarily off the table, but we need to carefully consider that um, with what we're doing. And I've linked here both the uh, the wiki page that is currently up uh, describing Hyperledger Aries and also the original announcement post, which has some stuff in there as well. These both have not been updated in quite some time, um, and it may be useful 
um, independent of an OWF move to to clarify or to focus um, the things that um, the thing. Obviously, we're not going to go change the announcement posts, but uh, but uh, but clarify on the the Hyperledger Aries Wiki page um, could be could be useful there um, in order to to help that to happen. Um, and the the last thing that I think is important, and I don't have any bullet points under this, uh, is is the promotion of the community. Um, and I think that there's uh, we certainly are aware of, of what Hyperledger does uh, for the promotion of the community, and that would be an, an uh, that is, I believe, an important topic to consider. Um, not that Open Wallet uh, wouldn't, uh, but just we'd need to understand the nature of that and, and how it would actually happen. Um, and so, and so, with that sort of brief overview and kickstarting of that uh, particular conversation, um, I'd love to open the floor to hear from folks. Um, and, and, and by the way, this being opinion of Sam, you're free to, of course, to disagree with me or anything else. Um, uh, and, and that's important for, for healthy conversation moving forward as a project. Um, and so, uh, yes, um, so uh, now is a great time to hear the thoughts and opinions of folks um, as we continue our discussion from last week. And Tracy is first in line with her hand up. Go ahead, Tracy. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, so just wanted to, to make some comments here about some things that I think might be useful for the conversation uh, if and when you do decide to move to, to the Open Wallet Foundation. Uh, really, I think this is a, a great start, Sam, with the important things. I, I think this is where, uh, you know, the Open Wallet Foundation would need to know the sorts of things that you would be expecting as far as coming to the Open Wallet Foundation um, because this will allow them to, to understand kind of where they might need to, um, you know, spend money in order to make some of these things happen or, uh, you know, basically be able to tell you we don't provide X at this point. Uh, this is our plan for providing X, whatever that might be, uh, or, or whatever the case is, right? So, um, you know, there, there's been some things that I've been thinking about uh, with really relationship to Aries and Hyperledger and some of the things that exist. And I think maybe under promotion of community, there could be some of the, the stuff around education, um, you know, with the edX platform, um, you know, the, the meetups, the, um, uh, you know, different webinars that, that Hyperledger provides. Those are some of the things that I think, you know, are, are useful to call out um, because you probably expect those things, but um, might not be, uh, you know, on the radar, if you will, of the Open Wallet Foundation at this point. And so just to, to be very clear about what it is that your expectations would be, I think is, is really a, a good thing to, to highlight here. Thanks, Tracy. Um, I should, uh, I forgot a detail that this reminds me of. Um, I, when I was in EIC, um, I uh, had a conversation directly with Daniel Goldscheider. Did I say that correctly? Um, he, uh, he's the, he's the ED at the OWF at the moment. Um, he, um, uh, we talked about that conversation and, and, and that, uh, he would, he would love to know. And so rather than me taking a guess at what would be useful, um, I thought it would be better to have this conversation as a community. And then we could sort of collectively, uh, pass, um, uh, you know, could collect the things necessary if, if we felt like, um, uh, that would be a useful uh, move going forward or, uh, you know, a useful uh, a step in trying to figure this out. And so uh, I that is pending and, and the ball's kind of in my court there. And my intent was to, you know, to gather the, the things that we as a community talked about in order to um, in order to put that together. Um, and so um, I, I thanks for reminding me of that um, and, and, and your contributions there. Uh, Helen, your hand is up. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, putting on my hat here uh, as chair of the Hyperledger Marketing Committee. Um, and for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a group of the membership, the, the sort of dues paying members, members of Hyperledger come together and um, talk about sort of the marketing and business items as related to the uh, growth and promotion of, of Hyperledger as a brand and you know around, around the globe that we talk about campaigns and content campaigns and events that Hyperledger will be at. We help, um, you know, write blogs and, you know, contribute uh, content um, where appropriate. And um, 
when you mentioned, Sam, about the opportunity to update some of the um, messaging and branding around Aries, I think that's, uh, that is an incredible idea. I think that's de definitely long overdue. And I think that there's a lot of resources um, that the community could help support with that. Um, and Daniela, feel free to jump in here as well. I know that there is a, um, a, a campaign coming up to update Hyperledger, um, Hyperledger's brand as a whole, um, and there will be opportunities for um, the projects to, um, you know, kind of gain that 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 branding um, development and 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 upgrading as well. So there will be time, um, kind of specifically where communities, uh, the community will be called out to do this um, work in the very near future. Um, so I definitely would in, would welcome and encourage uh, anybody who is interested in, you know, perhaps including terms like wallets or, um, you know, anything that would gain greater clarity um, and communicate, um, you know, what's going on here um, to be a part of that movement, because I, you know, I think that is definitely appropriate um, uh, and a good time for that. That is correct. Um, our marketing manager, Ben Thomas, presented to the uh, Technical Oversight Committee at Hyperledger a couple of weeks back around the branding and the branding opportunities for projects. We're doing a branding refresh. Um, our current Hyperledger Foundation brand is uh, seven years old. Uh, well, the Hyperledger branding. The foundation started in 2021 as an umbrella of projects. Um, but yes, that will be happening uh, in late July. Uh, late June, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, so I have the, the wiki. There's a couple, uh, some new folks that are trying to have the wiki link uh, in here. Uh, a reminder to add yourself to the, uh, to the um, attendee list. <clears throat> I'd also welcome any help uh, editing and, and clarifying, correcting uh, notes uh, on the meeting itself. Um, I, uh, I, I will attempt to do so, but um, uh, help was, is, is uh, really uh, useful there. So, um, yes. Um, so please correct anything that I misrepresent or that I miss or anything else. There's, uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, <laughs> there's, there's, there's no attempt to filter anything. I'm just not perfect at representing things that are down. So, uh, I, I really appreciate that. Um, okay. So that's uh, helpful on a hyperledger brand refresh and, and, and marketing. Thank you, uh, Helen and Danielle for that. Um, other topics that folks want to bring up and talk about. It's also a perfectly okay to bring up a topic you think needs to be discussed, even if you don't have anything in particular to say about it, but you think it ought to be. Timo. Um, yeah, uh, just a quick one, because I don't want to reiterate what I said last week. Um, but I think um, for me still, it's like um, there's two topics where one is like, should we move it to uh, open wallet? But I'm also curious about like, um, most about like what then is the scope of Aries and how does it work with like um, if the things you're working on exceeds the scope of Aries and I think that's for me um, an answer to that question would could have a big impact on what I think would be the right thing to do especially because we're just now working more on um, code for building SSI solutions um, and um, the question is Arise that and is like Hyperledger uh, a home where we can have these types of generic frameworks and, and then like also that the Arise brand or like something else uh, type of brand is linked to that um, or is Arise really the uh, SSI protocols that together form uh, like the SSI DITCOM um, um, protocols that together form an intro profile um, with adjacent code bases that implement Arise. I think that's for me um, an important question on like what, yeah, what's important. Timo, thank you for bringing that up. I, I think that we lightly touched on the, the Aries scope thing last week, but then didn't really get into it. Um, and so it, it may be useful to have more discussion on that today. Um, other other topics that folks want to bring up before we we go that direction. Can I put my hand up, Sam. 
John, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, so it's John from from government of British Columbia. I think one thing I've been thinking about and raising with a few people is that um, I wonder like if it's a little bit reversed sort of the conversation. So Aries, <clears throat> sorry, just, um, you know, we've invested years of effort and millions and millions of dollars as a community and as the government, British Columbia, and it's a huge asset. Um, and I wonder like if Open Wallet Foundation can describe to us like what it is they feel like they can offer essentially. So instead of us like just trying to figure out, it feels like we're trying to figure out how to fit into something that we don't quite understand. We, we know and understand, you know, the hyperledger infrastructure and governance structure and, you know, who the people are and so forth. Um, but we don't really understand. It's kind of an empty vessel and we have to be mindful of the investment that we've made and what what is best for our investment. On Timo's topic, I think I I I think of Aries as not just Aries protocols, but a you know set of frameworks that can make you that can accept protocols, credential formats, crypto schemes that are from a wide variety of sources so that it, so that an Aries agent can speak those different things, different languages. It's not just Aries. That's um, it. So on your first point, uh, what is the pitch from OWF? Uh, that is, uh, that's entirely fair. The, the conversations um, that have been had have been less group conversations and, and more uh, sort of individual conversations. And I think one of the really useful things we could do, obviously at the, at the off the cuff right now is a little too soon, but I think that we could, um, you know, sort of provide some, some updates from our community discussions and then extend an, an offer uh, for that to occur um, soon. Um, and, uh, you know, next week, for example, um, that, that could, uh, that we could use to, to evaluate that. Um, and I think that that is a great point. Um, I think as a, as a group, I think, uh, some of us know some, but not certainly all of us. Um, and, and I doubt that all of us know all. And so that, that's a great, that's a great point, John. I, I really appreciate that. And, and you got a plus one from Steve as well on that topic. Very good. Tracy. Yeah, just on that particular point, um, I will tell you that every other week is a conflict uh, for people in the OWF with the uh, Technical Advisory Council meeting. Um, so next week would be a conflict, obviously, for them um, with this particular meeting because they happen at the same time. So, um, you know, I'm perfectly happy to do that. Uh, introduction into the Open Wallet Foundation to this group. It's just that next week is probably going to be challenging. And so, um, yeah, I don't know if you want me to run through the presentation that exists for Open Wallet Foundation today, or um, if we don't have enough time, then we can obviously do that two weeks from today. I think we need more depth. I've seen presentations and I think we need more depth, like how are governing structures going to work? How can Aries be part of the governing structure? What are budgets? What are resources that are going to be offered? You know, to, to Sam's points earlier, right? Like, you know, how do we ensure that things are, there's an operating structure? Mm -hmm. I think we could inform that discussion with the sort of aforementioned list of, of um, air quote expectations, right? Um, about uh, about how that would, uh, about what we have, or certainly the things that we appreciate today. Um, and so, 
it strikes me that uh, after this call, we could assemble that and provide at that, at least in draft form, right? And then, and then that gives the the Open Wallet Foundation an opportunity to to see that and and be able to respond to those those things specifically. I think would be would be a really useful thing. So it it might be a little bit um, depending on kind of what the what the uh, the you know what meetings they're able to make, um, but that's certainly a possibility. Uh, Steve, your hands up. Um, yes, I um, and I noticed that. Um, well, let me ask this question: What, what, other than Hyperledger being ledger based and Aries not being tied to a ledger, what is it about Open Wallet Foundation? What precipitated this discussion? I mean. Why are we not having the discussion of joining W3C or DIFF or what what brought about this particular discussion? I, I think I missed that piece and it's always been, when I've been in these discussions, it's been, um, you know, Hyperledger is ledger based, Open Wallet Foundation is not tied to a ledger. Therefore, it makes sense, and and that seems to be the overriding motivation, but that doesn't necessarily seem to me like a whole reason to make a shift. And so I'm I'm still a little confused on on what what was the genesis for this discussion. If somebody could fill me in, I'd, I'd be grateful. Thank you, Steve and uh, Andre. Your hands up. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's an interesting point uh, that Steve is, is is bringing up. So I from for me personally, I think it's a perfect match actually because um, the 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 Aries community has been building agents in the sense of uh, wallets or as an underpinning framework for wallets for for ages. So basically, the 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 topical match with OWF is the best. That there ever was between um, projects under under Hyperledger, I think in that space. So I think it it is a is a very very um, good match in terms of the space that is tackled. So that's that's it for me. And I think this is why this discussion is is so extremely valid and timely now at this point. Steve. So then. That does make sense. Um, when I first heard about the Open Wallet Foundation, the the way it was described to me is they weren't going to do any any specification work. They just wanted to bring in projects from other places and um, help there be implementations of those projects and specifications that could be certified and and offered to others that um, maybe didn't have the resources or interest to to build those underlying libraries a la a wallet and and that made a lot of sense to me but what i think what still what surprised me is well i think it would be a good idea for them to help aries build its libraries and build one on all the different platforms and languages and help that get certified into um, something that companies could and people could download. I, I'm still puzzled by what the offer is for hosting Aries creation there, because that, that seemed to be a little bit out of the realm of what I understood Open Wallet was looking for. And so if we shift the whole Aries project over there, they are going to be in charge of spec generation work. And so that's the disconnect for me. I think it would be great, a great venue for Aries products to be certified, validated and hit the market in a greater way. I think that would be wonderful, but it's the hosting of the project that seemed to be just a little bit orthogonal to how it was described, um, the open wallet mission, um, at least to me. So that's that's kind of where I'm getting hung up on. So I'll offer my uh, perspective uh, on on how this happened. Um, the we heard about the creation of the Open Wallet Foundation, and there was uh, sort of inviting to the 
you know, uh, some some pre-organization announcements and and folks that were invited, um, and then it got created. Um, you know, I was I was aware of it, but but as a as a person, not as a community leader within Aries. Um, and and then during the the sort of the pre phase where it wasn't officially organized yet, but calls were happening, uh, I did volunteer um, for the uh, for the Aries. Uh, I did also did this for DIDCOM, but also volunteered the Aries project to come and present at those sort of pre uh, organization meetings um, to uh, to sort of present what we were and, and what was related. And and uh, there's several of, of us went and, and helped share the various aspects of the of the projects that we have. Um, and the overriding question, and that was something that I volunteered. Um, there was uh, the, the overriding question at the end was like, well, what are the intentions of the Aries project as it relates to um, as it relates to Open Wallet? And um, and I didn't have an answer for that. Um, and so um, at this point, there's there's been general questions, uh, very general in the sense of like, well, hey, how does Aries feel about this? Um, and uh, but not really uh, certainly an official proposal floated really by anyone. Um, there's been uh, sort of unofficial uh, conversations that mostly happened at EIC. Um, and so the uh, part of the awkwardness comes from the fact that I think that the Open Wall Foundation was launched as, with a scope that, that appears to cover uh, Aries. And one of the things that the different organizations have attempted to do like the Trust of RP and, and DIFF and W3C and, and, and uh, and Hyperledger is to try and figure out what people are doing and not necessarily uh, overlap too much. Um, and so uh, it was a little awkward to me that the that the Open Wallet Foundation was created sort of without prior communication or uh, or consideration um, with the Aries community at all, given that we're the largest uh, open source, you know, effort uh, oriented in this area. Um, and so that awkwardness kind of remains um, in the sense that we haven't still, uh, I think that in, in our request to the, um, uh, as John suggests, I think in our request to the o o OWF to come and, and sort of make an official pitch or, or proposal um, that, that could uh, be a little bit more clarified instead of sort of having, uh, you know, ad hoc conversations about it, um, that, that, could, uh, that could definitely help there. Um, uh, you raise a couple things, uh, Steve about about what Aries is, and we talked about this a little bit last time, but I think that's that's worth uh, that's worth discussing. Um, Aries is kind of has evolved into three things, and I believe those three things uh, existed and were created within Aries because certainly at the time that it began, there wasn't any other places to do these types of things, um, and so. We uh, started from the idea that we wanted to have software that could talk to, with each other independent of implementation. And so we began the creation of, uh, you know, protocols and uh, and, and communication expectations um, that uh, that ended up becoming. We didn't label it at the time as V1, but it became Didcom V1, and uh, and and then the associated protocols. Of course, uh, you know, there was several created early. Basic message was one. Um, the issue credential, present proof, were others, and so those fell under the spec work because there wasn't really. Um, there, there wasn't really a place to do that kind of spec work at the time. Um, did Combi 2 uh, sort of became an effort that graduated out of Aries and, and has ha happened in its entirety at the diff um, and, and within that organization. Um, and, um, and so uh, anyway, uh, the third thing that Aries kind of is, uh, is, is the creation of, uh, of interoperability profiles, which is not really spec work exactly, but it's kind of spec work adjacent. And the fact that you're trying to assemble existing specs into a collection and call it a profile that then people can sort of target as a as a full stack implementation that follows all the way through that profile um, and so those three things are there we have discussed that the protocol sides of things now have a possible home in in the in the 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 diffs um, did come users group um, and that, that certainly that topic covers there and and that could be a reasonable home for that um, there uh, will be um, uh, I anticipate that somewhere uh, this could still kind of be an Aries effort, but, but could also be a larger open wallet effort where the creation of, of, of one or more profiles exists in order to um, to coordinate community development efforts uh, and, and collaboration around a particular you know, set of technologies as they're as they're created. Um, and so 
Um, that's kind of what it has been. I, that, that description I gave doesn't talk about uh, the sort of what the scope of Ares actually is, but those are the three mechanical bits that have existed in, in, the, in the Ares ecosystem. Um, and we have discussed that the, it's certainly the DIDCOM piece of that would not, uh, or, or sorry, the, the protocol design pieces of that related to, to uh, DIDCOM would not uh, be homed inside of OWF, but, but it does have a, a sort of a logical home um, over in the, the DIDCOM users group at the DIF. And with that, Ken, your hands up. Yeah, I wanted to comment on the fact that uh, as Ares expands its footprint and works with uh, other um, protocols besides um, or transports and protocols besides the DIDCOM and um, will that work be hosted at, at, at the DIF as well? I think Ares is a place where bringing together multiple um, credential formats and the ability to plug in uh, multiple uh, protocols and, and exchange mechanisms I think is a is a great strength of, of Ares and it uh, has been a great foundation to allow people to explore that in an interoperable way. Um, I don't know that the spec work could all be contained at the at the diff. Maybe it could, but uh, that's something to consider as well. I think looking at what Ares has accomplished with its rather unique um, combination of work on specifications, work on actual implementations and interop profiles has been extremely successful. And I think that. Um, continuing that um, on that great track record is something that I, I hope Aries continues to do. It, it's a little bit worth noting that Hyperledger is not really a spec organization itself, but within the Aries project, it was necessary to document the types of interactions that we expected to happen within the Aries community. And there gradually has been more and more uh, interest outside of the Aries community uh, for that to happen. So there's a, there's a tiny bit of awkwardness there in the sense that we're doing things within areas that then became popular outside of it. Um, and, uh, and whether that's a spec creation or not um, depends a little bit on sort of perspective scope and what happens with it. Um, I think it would be useful to have a conversation about the scope of Aries. Um, uh, as as um, Timo brought up, I think that that would be useful, for example, for not only us to sort of have a good co conversation about, but to be understood by the Open Well Foundation uh, as, they, as they consider um, uh, who we are and, and how it might fit. Um, and so I'd, I'd love to do that. We John contributed a, a sort of a statement here that I, I attempted to transcribe accurately about uh, about what Aries actually is. Um, and I will start it off simply with a historical note. Uh, so I'd love to hear from, from, from folks what they, in their mind, what, what it is. And, and it's clear that it's been a while since we've updated. Uh, and so it's, it's quite possible that what exists in uh, approximately in sort of community tribal knowledge has not been well serialized into, uh, into anything that is um, like on the, on the Aries Wiki page, for example. Um, and so uh, it, it's likely that we have sort of made uh, we have refined our scope or made it more clear over time, but not really like serialized it anywhere that, that and it's possible that we don't have an even understanding in our community about exactly what it is. And so I'd love to hear from folks about what they think it is. Um, from a historical perspective, um, Ares was spun out of the Indie project because we recognized that the need to have software that communicated um, using ledger assets, but not on the ledger would be a would be a useful and necessary bit and so there was some uh, some origins inside of indie uh, of that concept that became aries and so the original uh, motivation to spin that out was the fact that um, was that there uh, is utility beyond just an indie agent rather a, a, a two agents that can can talk to indie um, but rather uh, agents that can talk to other ledgers as well and so from the beginning um, at least in my mind, that was um, that was a, a motivational goal to have happen there. At the time, we did not specifically discuss, um, I believe, credential formats or protocols, but uh, but those line up well with the original motivation was to have software that that that, that did SSI things that could use ledgers as a resource, but was not tied to a specific ledger. And so the the mission of adopting credential formats. Uh, beyond what was supported in Indy and protocols beyond what was originally supported in Indy also uh, feels very natural to me in that. Um, but that uh, is only kind of what has existed in my brain. Um, I'd love to hear from 
for folks what uh, in their mind Indy actually is or what the scope of the project is, regardless of what's recorded, what you feel like it, it, it has been uh, in your involvement in the project. One thing to note, one thing to note, I think, Sam, is the the Aries agent test harness, which I think is a really valuable asset. And to a certain extent, a software expression of what Aries is. Um, so, John, that's really good. And that's probably the fourth thing that is different enough from the other three things that I should record that separately. So I will. Um... There's also an Aries mobile test harness. But there's no reason why uh, those test harnesses can't start to include other protocols, I don't think, not having been the guy who developed it. But um, so you talked about profiles. You know, I think we could have profiles in the future that include, you know, open ID for VC and things like this. Certainly, uh, we already do multiple credential formats. That's already in play, right? Uh, yes, multiple credential formats is already in play. Um, the other, um, the other part that uh, is in. Uh, play already uh, in the proposed AIP3, which is not done uh, because, uh, among other things, conversations like this are happening, um, is the is using DIDCOM v2, which was developed entirely outside of, of yeah. the Aries community. And so um, I think there is already precedent for uh, involving things defined elsewhere. Um, another thing, as an example, is the um, the presentation exchange uh, definition at the diff is, is has also been referenced in AIP2. Right. And then I don't know exactly if this fits, but another key part of what makes Aries wallets work for people is the uh, you know presentation layer activities like OCA for Aries. You know, so that's internationalization, branding, and so forth, which I think is overlooked. I don't know where to stick that in my, in my list of four. I don't know so I'm add another one. Um, I don't know where to stick OCA, so I'm going to stick it on its own item unless it becomes obvious that it, it needs to go somewhere else. Um, it may fall close enough under an interop profile. It's not really an Aries interop profile, but yeah. definitely uh, something there that we can talk about it. But but yes. Um, so so going back to the scope question, what do folks feel like the scope of Aries is? Timo. Um, I think to me, it currently uh, feels as um, SSI built on top of DITCOM, um, which probably maybe isn't right. I wasn't there from the start when Airways was created, but I think that's how I perceive it. And I think a lot of people perceive it. And I think also um, primarily using Hyperledger Indie. Timo, I don't think you're wrong that that's a common thing. And the fact that you've been in our community and a massive contributor for a while and sort of still have that scope means that we haven't really had this conversation uh at the at the regularity that we should have had uh perhaps you know like a year ago um uh or more that uh, that would have helped to clarify that so i don't think your perception there that this is uh uh both did focused and indie focused is i don't think that's uh rare particularly outside of our community yeah i'm not saying i think it should be this it's just what i think it is right now right I, I agree, but I think it, it has evolved to, to much more. And I, I think probably, uh, Timo, you mean the same, because it, it obviously does more than just in the ledger stuff. And I think this is also an, an, an a clear added value that would be very useful uh, for OWF and under OWF. I think that's, yeah, I think that might be from my point of view, a bit of the frustration that we haven't been 
clear and vocal enough about the fact that we have been for several years been able to do multiple credential formats and the framework, you know, multiple ledgers or no ledger, whatever did come method or did method you want and all this. So it's a little bit like I have said to some people, like people, you know, well, maybe it's unfair that people haven't even read the readme, but the readmes are wrong. <laughs> They're out of date. Um, I stole Clesio's from the the uh, the chat. Uh, Warren, your hands up. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I, I would say that uh, my perception, um, as somebody who's really only got involved in the in the last year, um, is that the foundation. Wow. Uh, and underpinnings of Aries are certainly Indie and, and on creds and Didcom. Um, and I can tell you for sure that although there has been evolution to support other things, that the perception outside of this group um, that, that I encounter is that Aries is those things. Um, and so uh, whether we currently believe that we have a, a wider story or not, many outside of this community do not believe that. And so there is, uh, I think it's worthwhile to go through the exercise of <clears throat> defining what it is that we are, um, but equally or even more importantly, we, we need to communicate that externally in a very uh, persuasive way, which has not been uh, convincing so far. Um, Timo, you asked who's using, and you mentioned AFGO. Um, there's um, part of the downsides of having an open community is that we don't uh, always hear directly about the people that are doing stuff. Um, I'm, I'm going to point briefly at the Entidad effort um, that uh, that Jorge mentioned. They've been working on really cool stuff for a long time that's not well known. And I don't mean to make some protocol point in doing so, um, but there's a lot of stuff going on that we, that, that we don't hear from. And so that's it's a, it's a bummer. We'd love them to come. Lots of folks are just busy or the time doesn't work out very well. Um, but the um, but, uh, there's, uh, definitely efforts, uh, for example, that I've seen with Akapai that are using JSON LD credentials and, um, and with, with peer dids, but not indie dids. Um, it's a little bit awkward now because of the, the, the ongoing, uh, transition that we need to do away from those, uh, those legacy dids, but there was never an intention to, um, to, uh, to anchor those. And so, um, there's, there's some of that, um, but, but the other thing, and the other thing that I'll mention too, um is uh uh timo is is the excitement when i learned that afj was adding support for the open id connect protocols um and some of the other credential formats got me really excited because like a piece of the vision that we have long wanted to do um hadn't yet been realized the, the other interesting thing um as evidence for example about what warren said is that the perception uh, outside of our group um, is is that Aries is very rigidly those things. Um, I think mostly has to do with the fact that we have primarily as a group been focused on getting stuff done, um, which is great. I think that uh, still um, we are the largest community of, of independent uh, operators and implementations that can demonstrate compatibility um, across a larger scope and, and other efforts are, are sort of catching up from a very uh, um, credential focused uh, thing, um, but, um, but, but, but we, that's what we've been done. And we haven't spent a lot of time marketing uh, externally necessarily about our efforts. And I think that that's one of the reasons why our, our, the external perception has suffered is that 
um, is, is that, that that is true. One, one thing that I'll offer in evidence was uh, more than a year ago um, within the, um, I'm going to blank on the name of it, but there was an effort within the, um, the Ethereum community and they produced basically an Aries agent, but didn't call it an Aries agent. Um, and they built it there because they felt like it wouldn't fit within the Aries community. And that's an evidence of the difference between the internal perception of the project and the external per uh, perception of the project as well. It's like Ver Vermo or something like that. Verimo. There you go. Thanks. Verimo. It was not, my brain was not pulling it up. So Verimo and Verimo, in my opinion, is exactly what an Aries agent should be, but in their perception, it was not. Now there may have been other political reasons why they did, they didn't want to develop it on Hyperledger. Um, but, but that certainly, uh, is, is related. Uh, Steve. Yeah, I'm enjoying this discussion and I'm learning a lot. Um, so as we get short on time for today, what kind of what I've observed is some seem moderately in favor, some seem moderately not in favor. And there's probably a lot of people saying, cool, I just want to code. <laughs> so. Um, with all of this going on, what what is our next step? We so we've discussed this last week and and this week. Um, what what are we heading towards? Are are we going to have a vote in this community? Are we going to wait for maybe OWF comes and and pitches to us the the benefits of joining their organization? What what is the next step that we're moving towards? So. Uh, thank you for transitioning so gracefully, Steve, right at the last <laughs> five minutes to what exactly we need to talk about. Um, uh, this thing that stick out in my brain, and I'll share this, and then, and then I'm very interested in, in what folks think we should do next. Um, I think that out of what our conversations, I could distill a list of um, at least a dra in draft form of our expectations to the OWF. Um, and that, uh, not, uh, that, that would not be, of course, binding in any way, but that would be a, a little bit of a description of sort of the scope of what we generally would anticipate. Um, and that gives the OWF a chance to review it and understand it, and then, and then, have, uh, and then they have a chance to come back and, and talk to us. Um, the, uh, in the event that they can't come next week, uh, I think that it, continuing the the uh, the possibility of there's two things related to Aries scope that I think are relevant conversations that we need to have independent of of a move to OWF. Meaning it would be useful if we're not if we're moving to OWF, and it'd also be useful if we're not moving to OWF. And that involves the 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 what Aries is mechanically uh, and the various pieces there. It's been expressed in uh, last week's meeting that having the software and the um, and the protocol design within the same effort is not a good idea, um, has been voiced by a few. And, um, and so uh, we, the, having this conversation aligned with the, the sort of a scope a definition of what we think it ought to be, I think is a useful thing that we can do independently of any sort of a vote to like make that happen. Um, and so I, I think that uh, that would be a useful conversation for next week. And so it's a little bit peripheral to the main conversation, but not the main one. Um, and then um, and then that would give the, the OWF an opportunity to come and, and talk to us about um, and, and, and make a proposal um, uh, for, uh, for, what, uh, for what could happen. Um, I, I think that is kind of next steps. And that, uh, that means that our next conversation would be mostly about scope and, and branding of Aries. Um, and, and, uh, and then, uh, for example, if, if protocol design was something that we thought should, should move uh, anyway over to the DIDCOM users group, that could be something that we actually execute independent of, of an OWF move. Um, and then, uh, but also uh, branding and, 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 and we could tag on to the, the rebranding that Hyperledger is in doing generally speaking and engage um, uh, or, or talk amongst ourselves or, or as appropriate engage with Hyperledger to figure out how we can do a sort of a, a better branding clarification around, um, around Aries itself. And, uh, and, and that would be, I think, really helpful to carry that conversation either f future, you know, in our community here or future in, in the other stuff as well. Um, and so that would be good. Uh, Tim mentions that it would be nice to talk about how the Linux digital, uh, Foundation Digital Trust Initiative fix, uh, fits in, whether there's actually a thing there or whether it's sort of a logical grouping of, of, of organizations, that would also be a really helpful thing. 
Um, and so that's kind of what's in my brain. Um, I apologize for talking so long about that. Are, is there any uh, better ideas that folks have on, on what we should do as next steps? I think the uh, reframing is an important discussion and that may be one of the pros of the open wallet is reframing. I think externally, it, people might perceive it differently if we move yeah. to the Open Wallet Foundation as opposed to sort of like uh, launch a clarification effort just because they're going to feel like it's different even if in practice it isn't. Yeah. I think that's what you meant, John. Yeah, it'll just, I put it in chat here, but, you know, again, being that, you know, I have this kind of role as in, in the marketing world at Hyperledger um, as marketing chair and represent the Hyperledger, you know, membership and, and, and projects, um, again, happy to support anybody who would like to help with this rebranding effort if we want to meet um, as a community, uh, maybe on a different call. Um, to go through some of these items and sort of uh, put together a kind of a, a, a relaunch or, you know, reframing publicly, um, I can pull together some numbers of existing, um, you know, blogs and webinars and social follows and kind of where we've, where we've really hit momentum um, in the past and, you know, where we want to expand uh, in the future. So happy to, happy to help with that if anybody's interested. So we didn't talk about wallet versus agent as a term, but that's a whole thing. Um, that we need to talk about. Um, and there's been some sort of gradual shift in the community there as well. Um, and so I think that next week might be best spent on, on a thing there. I would love some assistance from Hyperledger from a branding perspective. What I am, uh, what I feel a little awkward about is that, um, is that it's possible that we as a community work on this, this branding. Um, and then uh, if we move to OWF, it feels really, uh, in bad form to leverage uh, hyperledger resources for branding and then leave with that work. Um, I feel a little awkward about that, but I definitely feel like um, any any contribution um, that folks are willing to uh, or, or any 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 help that we could get would be helpful. And so we can we can figure out the best way to do that. Um, I don't want to do hyperledger wrong in that process, um, but uh, but definitely that conversation would be good. So uh, I, I know we're just a little bit over. Uh, what I'm going to do is frame next week around an Aries scope conversation um, and, and to continue that. And we can talk uh, and, and argue those points uh, more directly. Um, I will put together um, sort of the, the summary of our notes here with links to these notes uh, to, to share with, with Daniel. And Tracy, uh, you obviously have been here. Um, and so you'll be familiar with those. Um, and that way, uh, that context is available um, for uh, for anyone at the OWF that would like to come and present, and we'll plan that for two weeks out. Um, I, I think that uh, it's it's important to have the conversation next week, regardless of of what happens with the OWF stuff, because I think that we've identified a problem. We probably should have figured this out like a year ago or more, but better now than never. Um, and so uh, ha having that, I think, is is a, definitely a good use of our time. I apologize for being open or over. Uh, grateful for everyone's contributions and discussion here today. Um, I feel like we've we've made some good progress, um, and we will see you all next week or online uh, if if uh, if additional conversation happens in all of our channels. Thank you, folks, and I hope your week is a great one. Thanks, 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 thanks everyone. Thank you.